high inflation, strong economy, booming stock markets. How is this possible? And even more important, is it sustainable? Will this go on in the future? That's the topic that I would like to discuss today and I would like to share some of my views about this important topic. Now last week we saw some very interesting developments. We had the November CPI index. CPI stands for Consumer Price Index and it was at 6.8%. On the same day we had booming stock markets. The S&P 500 came to another record high and many other stock market indices around the world did pretty well too. So is this sustainable? High inflation and booming stock markets and good economy? Or should we worry? Well, let's look back in history. History is always a good analogy. We cannot say that it always repeats itself, but it gives us some clues about what could happen going forward. Now let's go back to the 70s or the late 60s. In 1969, we had a similar situation. Inflation, CPI, went up to 6.2%. I sketched some of these numbers here. Let's look at interest rates back then. The 10-year government bond was at 6.7%. And the S&P 500 year on year went down 11%. That's a pattern that you find quite often. High inflation is always a little bit a track on the economy, particularly if interest rates are high. Let's go a little bit forward in history, 1973. 1973 is a very important date. In 1973, the inflation crisis of the 70s started and it lasted until 1982. We had almost 10 years of inflation problems back then in the US and in many other countries around the world. Back then, in 1973, we reached 8.7% in the CPI. At the same time, the 10-year government bond was 6.5 to 7.5%. And even more important, let's look on the short-term side of interest rates. The federal funds rate crossed over 10%. Mortgage rates went over 9%. So just imagine this. You buy a house or an apartment and you have to pay 9% interest per year on this. Quite a difference from today. Not surprisingly back then, in the year of 1973, the stock market went down 17%. And when you look into 1973 and 1974, the picture is even worse. In these two years, the stock market measured by the S&P 500 lost almost half of its value, 50% in roughly one and a half years. That was quite traumatic. Now let's forward, go forward in history to today's environment. 2021, we just said the November CPI index is at 6.8%. That's quite high. But now something strange happens when we look at the interest rates. The interest rates are still at 1.5% roughly for the 10-year bond and when we look at the S&P 500 we are close or above record levels and that's pretty unusual when we look back in history. Why is that possible? Well, I think everything depends that much on the 1.5% on the interest rates and on the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve ignores inflation right now and they do so because they think it's transitory. They think it has to do with the reopening of the economy and therefore they continue their ultra-loose monetary policy. The governments around the world still provide stimulus for the pandemic. They think the economy is not strong enough on its own so they push more money into the economy, create more demand, create more revenues for companies and consumer demand, obviously. 
and they have massive fiscal deficits. And that's not only an issue that's connected to the pandemic. We have seen it for years. We have record level debt levels. And it has to do with the governments that push a lot of uh, stimulus in the economy for years now, since the last financial crisis, to be correct. And we see this around the world. What we see right now in the US is not only something isolated. We see it in Europe, we see it in Asia. And this concerns me. When you look back in history, we have a very s strong synchronization of monetary policy, fiscal policy, and investor behavior around the world. We have ultra-loose monetary policies in Japan with the European Central Bank. There's almost no place in the developed world that you can find that deviates from this synchronization. And that's something we have to watch closely because when we start synchronized to go the other way, we could see quite easily something happening that happened in the 1970s. And therefore, I highly recommend to study the 1970s. Learn more about what happened back then because inflation works quite different from what you learn in business school. In fact, I always say inflation inverts a lot of paradigms that we lear learned in business and in business school or in economics, and it's important to understand that. If you want to learn more about the 70s, unfortunately, there's not a lot of material available. Therefore, I devoted a whole chapter in my book, The Return of High Inflation, to the topic of inflation during the 1970s. The stagflation that happened back then, and more importantly also, what strategies for businesses and investors worked back then in the 1970s and which ones did not. Now very quickly, when you look at that topic about inflation in the 1970s, you get to Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett in the 1970s, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, had a tremendous outperformance with his company in comparison to the S&P 500. In fact, Warren Buffett was someone who turned inflation risks into a major opportunity. And that's very interesting for us to learn. And one thing that Warren Buffett did not believe in back then was the famous sentence that you hear all over business media, cash is trash. Warren Buffett didn't believe in this. He had a lot of liquidity going into the inflation crisis. And when stock, stock markets started to fall in 1973, he was there equipped with a lot of cash to take advantage. And that wasn't a major competitive advantage for Warren Buffett versus everybody else. And therefore, I warn you to believe in generalizations. Cash is trash sounds simple, sounds uh, reasonable, but these generalizations don't help you because it's not true that cash is trash. During the time before an inflation shock happens, it's quite good to have some cash. Wouldn't you like to be in a position when stock markets were at a discount of 50% to its previous peak to have enough cash to take advantage of this situation. So be careful. Cash at the right time is a very good strategy. Obviously, cash for the long term doesn't work because inflation eats it away. Now, when we go forward in, uh, to the future, how should we think about the situation? Will this continue or will we see a rerun of the 1970s with all the pain that we experienced back then. Well, there are two ways to think about it. You can be a positive thinker, that's the position A, and you can say the party will go on because it must go on. Right? 
there's some truth to it because central banks can obviously not that quickly raise interest rates because that will be very disruptive. In comparison to the 1970s, we have a much, much bigger debt problem than the folks in the 1970s had. So you have to be a little bit careful with raising interest rates to not upset the economy and not to upset the financial markets. Keep in mind, we have a synchronized monetary policy right now and that increases the chance for something bad happening if everybody moves to the other uh, side. I always encourage people to think about the current situation as a gigantic game of musical chairs. Imagine your kids playing that game, musical chairs, 100 kids at a birthday party and five chairs are left. Now as long as the music plays nothing big happens. People will like it. The kids are happy, they get more and more confident that it's okay. The few kids they are a little bit nervous about, hmm, there are only five chairs, very quickly they lose their fears because nothing happened. The music goes on and on and on and then it stops. And imagine what happens. And if you can imagine what happens at the birthday party with 100 kids and five chairs, you kind of imagine what happens in the financial markets when the party will not go on. And we have seen that in history. Unfortunately, young investors have not gone through this. We saw it in the 1980s in Japan. The Japanese stock market index reached its high in December 1989. And since then it hasn't recovered. Can you imagine since 1989 we haven't reached in nominal terms that peak level that was reached back then. So be careful with the positive thinking. I always encourage to, uh, to take a critical thinking approach and that's based on preparedness. We don't know what the future will bring and Karl Popper the famous science theorist and the one who brought the black swan actually into the scientific discussion uh, almost 100 years ago. Karl Popper always said we don't know the future therefore we have to approach the future very carefully step by step and step by step in this context means preparedness is key. Think about the future as a possibility of different options or scenarios that could happen. It could go on for a while, the positive things, or we could have a negative scenario, which would be a rerun of the 1970s. And if that's the case, you want to be prepared. If you're prepared, like Warren Buffett was in the 1970s, and I will uh, prepare a video on this too for you to um, get that experience, this learning experience, then if you're prepared, you can turn inflation risks into an opportunity. If you're unprepared, the results can be distrust, disastrous. And that's particularly the case because we have such a collective unpreparedness for the opposite, for a rerun of the 70s. Almost everybody thinks it's gonna be fine the party will go on because it must go on. Therefore, you might consider to be prepared, to be in that camp and know what to do if the party doesn't go on. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to read more about the topic, topic of inflation, I invite you to read my book. It was published in 2016, so it's five years ago. I was in fact one of the first ones who warned publicly of the inflation risks in the future. And unfortunately, I have to say I was right back then in 2016. So you're invited to read it, but I will also provide some videos on this, um, on some topics. And if you have questions, put a comment there. If you have suggestions for uh, a new topic for a video, do the same. And I will try my best to provide my perspective and my ideas about this. Thank you very much and good luck 
with the future, you might need it.